I'm Dan Hunt, and this is Up Close and Personal. I'm live at the Aria Hotel Casino Resort and Spa, and I'm with Jason Appleton, the Crypto Crow. Make it sound so mysterious. I know, the Crypto Crow. The Crypto Crow. All came from a movie, I hear. Pretty much, pretty much. I, I was a big fan of the Crow when I was a kid. Really? And I, I like the idea, like, if I would ever die, I might come back and, and you know, right any wrongs, who knows? So, okay. yeah, it stuck with me for all these years. Uh, well, well, Jason, before we get into Crypto Crow and what you're doing right now, mm -hmm. let's, let's talk a little bit about you as a kid. Where'd oh. you come from? My mother. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> he came from his mom. I, you know, I was born in Stockton, California. Yeah. Um, my mom found out after they were married that my father was involved in organized crime. Okay. Um, and he was in federal prison basically my entire life. I've still never met him. But to get away from all that, we moved from California to Canton, Ohio. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, that's like a tidbit that I shared here that I don't think nobody else really that knows. Nobody else really he knows. actually wrote a book about it. So, yeah, um, I stopped reading his book when he mentioned me appearing the first time in a vat of heroin. So, yeah, how's that crypto? Yeah. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, from Canton and then from there we moved around a lot. I mean, it was just, I'm, I'm kind of a mutt. I'm from everywhere. Right. Yeah. And you're six, 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 seven? Five eleven. But no, I'm seven foot even. You're seven foot even. Yeah. Same yeah. height as Will Chamberlain. Is that how tall he is? Yes. Yeah, I thought he was height. like seven four. No, he's seven foot. Oh, okay. They must be short back then. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever play basketball? No, I was too uncoordinated. So as I, a kid, I could, you were kind of geeky. Uh, yeah, kind of sort. I could jump kick the net, but I've never dunked the ball. I was more of a combat sports, football, MMA kind of, you know, martial right. arts, that kind of thing. I was terrible at basketball. Terrible. terrible at basketball. And they still stalk me, try to get me to oh, play. Oh, I'm sure. You know, here's a, here's a funny story, no, no BS. I was actually a server in a Perkins when I was, I, I was a teenager, okay. okay? And it was late night and Rick Pitino's coaching staff was in a meeting, a post game meeting. Right. And they tried to recruit me. And they, they, were, they, they were talking about, oh man, we'll get you a full ride, we'll take care of you, you know, we'll make you a star, we'll get you your training. And I was like, you guys are right. There's no way in hell I'm ever playing basketball. I, I had no clue who I was turning down at the time. You had no, you had no clue? No clue. They're like, you ever hear of Rick Pitino's son? I'm like, no, I have no idea who that is. Did, do you think about it now as a 40 something year old and say, man. I'm 25, man, don't, 25, don't age me. 20, 25 plus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you think about it now and say, wow, my life would have been really different if I said yes? Uh, yeah, but I wouldn't have my wife and I wouldn't have my kids. And, and we talk about this all the time. Like, yeah, I'd probably, I'd already be retired from the NBA. I'd probably have all the same health problems. Uh, but, you know, I don't know, I don't know that I really regret it much because I, I kind of always, I've spent a lot of my time all these years actually learning things of importance. You know, whereas if I would have been a basketball player, I would just have a lot more kids. <laughs> have a lot more kids. That's probably and the a lot more of money, it. maybe. Yeah, a lot more money to pay them, <laughs> pay for them all. But you know, I don't know how fulfilling that would be long term. You know, almost everybody at this convention, we're at World CryptoCon, mm -hmm. and you know what a great convention, by the way. You yeah, know, it's great. It, it, it's a lot of big speakers here, a lot of big you know booths here and events here. Um, but one of the things that I'm noticing with everybody that I'm talking to and everybody that I'm interviewing is a sense of drive, mm -hmm. a sense of I can, I can, I can. And, and I see that in you as well. You started your first business when you were 17 years old, not even out of school. Right. So how, how did that come about? Um, the business or my drive in crypto? Yeah, the, the business. Well, I just, <clears throat> I think I was just born, you know, I think some people are just naturally born with the, the desire to create. And I think, in the crypto space that translates well because as as what most of us consider is I'm not necessarily a first adopter those guys came years before us right but you know we still feel like we are at the ground level of something society changing and and in that we have the opportunity to you know some of us advise projects we're a part of different blockchain projects and and so it gives us the opportunity to grow and develop and think and then educate others in a way that you couldn't do if we were all, what, what would we all do if we just jumped into NASDAQ and started swing trading? We, Everybody does that, you know what I mean? There's, no, there's nothing new about that. There's nothing really innovative about that. And so, yeah, I think it's, I think to have a, that, you know, some people try and, and they, they say, oh, I want to create a business, but they don't necessarily have that drive to drive it through the tough times. 
And <clears throat> I think that's what separates a lot of us who are you know, continuing on to those who don't. Your journey through life led you to a lot of things. You were a web developer, and then you, you sold your company out and then started working for the company that I'm a total bought sellout, total you're a total sellout. Total sellout. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> no, I did, I sold that company and then I ended up being the, the head of the division for the web development division for the company that bought me. Okay. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, so quickly I got bored again. I was like, I don't want to work for somebody else. I mean, I knew right. from, an, I mean, you can tell by this interview, I'm not somebody that's probably very employable. Um, you know, I'm very, I have my own way of doing things. And, you know, what I don't know, I learn. And I do much better self-taught than being led. And okay. so, you know, and I think that there are a lot of guys here that are, that are similar. And, um, but yeah, that's just, that's how it, it, it started. And Our wives must say, though, they're going to they're gonna yell at us. It's not just a lot of guys here that are that way. There's a lot of women here that sure. are that way, too. A lot of this very industry, driven, smart women I'm here. I'm seeing there's a lot of driven women. Yeah. And it's still, you know, not an equal situation in, in this industry, but right. do you see more women coming into the industry? You know, I, I've asked that question. I actually started a little group that I called Glock, the gorgeous ladies of crypto. <laughs> Glock. And, uh, Glock, it's hashtag Glock. <laughs> And uh, you know it's it's funny because it's there. You know I've had a group and, and they're all here. Um, and and then we have uh, what did I call us guys? I have a group of us guys that we do. I named it something else. Um, but uh, so I think and, and that was one of the things that we discussed in the last thing we did on my channel. It's you know what is it going to take for more women to take notice? The thing of it is is that cryptocurrency right now is looked at as high risk. Yes. Women are they have a. They're, they're, they're very risk averse. You know, the natural sentiment to a woman is security. Right. It's difficult to find that security in crypto right now. So to them, it kind of pushes them away. And so I do think it takes a more um, daring mindset, I think, to want to dive into something like this and make it such a large part of your life. Uh, but I think over time, as regulation set in and there's more security kind of built into the space, I think that we'll start seeing more women kind of adopt the technology and, and get involved. Let's talk about your channel of Crypto Crow and what you do on Crypto Crow. I just yell a lot and cry a lot. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. You, you know, <laughs> as we're sitting here doing this interview, the, the galleries behind us are starting to fill up. So you, you got to be a pretty popular guy. I have no idea why. I literally just yell a lot and cry a lot. <laughs> uh, no, I, you know, I think my big thing is I'm just brutally honest. And, and uh, I, I pull no punches. I, I call it how I see it and people respect that. And, and, and in this space where you know, there's a lot of BS that you have to kind of comb through and push through. Right. And um, it's, uh, yeah, I, I think that's really what it boils down to. Like, I, I've done a lot of paid reviews on my channel where most people look at paid reviews like, I'm not, how do you believe that? Well, I mean, I just, I pull no punches. Like, if a, if a company pays me to review their project and I think it's a crap show, right. I say it's a crap show. You know what I mean? And, and I think that's why a lot of people, they tune in because they're curious. I have had companies come to me just because they want to see if they make my cut, you know, and they're willing to take that risk knowing, you know, if they call on me, you know, if I find stuff that's wrong, but I'm also very productive. So, you know, there's, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's a big part of what I do is I research projects and then I kind of educate the public on, on what my personal opinions are as to whether or not it's something I would invest in, if I have invested in it, if I like the team, if I like the white paper, if I like the project, I think it has legs. And if it doesn't, I say it doesn't. And that's pretty much it. So let's talk a little bit about events like this. You, know, you and I travel around the country, around the world really, going to events like this. World CryptoCon in Las Vegas is the first time they've done it. Let, 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 no BS approach, what do you think so far? I, you know, I, I came from a, a, a promotion background. I mean, I used to promote mixed martial arts events at casinos and things. And so I understand the difficulty of setting up an event, marketing an event. I'm working on my own right now. And, and it's like, it's, it's a very challenging endeavor, but I think these guys have done very, very well. And, and you know, when you talk to these guys, these guys really care about the space. This isn't just like a cash cow kind of operation. Right. It is in Vegas, there, uh, there's a lot of overhead. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not exactly cheap to attend, but you know, you, it's, it's kind of one of those things that if you're not here, you're missing out on so much that you're not going to get elsewhere. And for the serious people that are, are very serious about crypto, 
I mean, they're here, and there's a reason that they're here. And I think, I think these guys, Adam and Eric and these guys, they've been doing a hell of a job with this thing. I, I'm just happy to be here. I'm having a great yeah, time. I, we are too. We're having a great time. We're interviewing a lot of incredible people, mm -hmm. and and you know the speakers here are just they're they're through the roof. Right. I don't know that I've been to any events that have speaker after speaker that. You just don't want to leave that room downstairs. Yeah, I almost accidentally completely crushed Brock Pierce when I walked into the poker thing. I had no idea he was like three and a half feet tall. <laughs> Isn't everybody three and a half feet tall? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, people really look up, okay. No pun intended. The people look up to me. <laughs> people look You're up so to you. right about that. I just caught that. So people look up to you, people listen to your channel. Out there right now, you know, crypto is, is or Bitcoin is kind of stuck at this 65, 6,065. For the last six months, mm -hmm. it's just been sitting there kind of not doing much of anything. Actually, most of your major cryptos have kind of been sitting in a stagnant point. Right. Um, is it time to panic? No. If, you, if you're into the cryptocurrency space for the technology, the innovation and the future and the growth of our society as a whole, and just everything that cryptocurrency is, is going to present and offer the public, there's no reason to panic. When I got into cryptocurrency and I started my channel and I started doing what I was doing, I had no idea that I was going to accomplish what I've accomplished, make what I've been, been making. Right. You know, I didn't realize how life-changing just that was going to be for me. And I got in because of what I saw as being something completely revolutionary. And the money just came with it. It's, it's kind of one of those things that we're in a position now where the, with the market where it's at, we're in a much better position from a speculative standpoint, from a technological standpoint, we're in a much better position today than we were a year ago because now we're already past a lot of the red tape. We're getting to a point where the regulation and just, just the foundation for the future and the growth of cryptocurrency as a whole is right here. It's happening right now as we speak. As we speak. And so, we don't have to worry about this phase of growth, you know, moving forward. We're right. almost already there. And so, you know, and, and, and with that, a lot of the speculators, a lot of the people who've been pushed out of the market, you know, when things got to an all-time high and Bitcoin hit like 19.8 or whatever the heck, it's like, okay, so people that bought in from FOMO at the high lost some money if they sold at a loss. You only lose what you sell at a loss, right? right? So if they're still holding, uh, and they didn't get scared out of it, or they didn't invest more than they could afford to lose, potentially, because that's the big thing in crypto. You never invest more than you can afford to lose, so that you no, don't have wait, to. Wait, wait, let's stop one more sure. time. I want everybody to understand this. This is something that I have preached, my wife has preached. Say that one more time. Never invest more than you can afford to lose. And it's just so important because, Because you know, if you invest more than you can afford to lose, it, you're easily scared into losses. Exactly. And so, and that's the nature of it. It's a psychology thing as much as it is a, just a responsibility thing. And so, you know, and the big whales, the players who have the means of manipulating the market have the means of pushing the, the dumb money, quote unquote, out. It's people that they buy in because they heard something somewhere, they put some money into it and they see, oh my God, it's dropping. It's dropping. They don't realize that the price can fluctuate 500 bucks in 30 minutes. Right. And go right back up to where it was. Right. And, and so because people that, and they're consider, it's considered dumb money, sorry folks, but that's kind of how it is. If you're not putting the time in to really understand the tech or trading or any of that, and you're putting in more than you can afford to just leave and sit, you're doing yourself a disservice long term. So, but I think that we are truly in a position now where we're, we're, we're beyond a lot of that. And I think that once the SEC, once all these regulations are final, you know, the tax code has been modified and more and clarified and things, the sky's the limit. I mean, we're going to have such a drastic change in the market and it's going to happen like that. And people that are trying to swing trade right now with Bitcoin where it's at are fools. You, you can sell out, you can sell your Bitcoin right now and as soon as the market turns around, it's going to skyrocket in no time at all. And then, it, and then at that point, it, the price is probably going to be far beyond the reach of most. So that's just my opinion. That, just your opinion? My opinion. Okay. I'm just an idiot on the internet. <laughs> well, let, let me ask you one more question. Mm -hmm. Is there a project out there that you think is really, really cool, one of the new up and coming projects that you've looked at or that you've heard about or that you've talked to here at, at World Crypticon? Uh, my wife would say me. Uh, <laughs> I'm still a project she's working on. Um, you know, there are so many really good projects. I, a, lot, a lot of my fans, they, they refer to me as King Cardano because I just, 
I love Cardano, it's one of my favorite projects, but outside of that, Matrix AI, Aeon is a really good one, Celsius Network is doing a lot of really big things. There are, there are I have like 35 projects that I really, really love, and I, I, I basically break them all down in the descriptions of all my videos. So if anybody wants to know what my top 35 or my favorite projects are, they're all right there. And that's on your YouTube channel. Yeah. And your YouTube channel, the link is right below us right now, so anybody that wants to check them out if they don't already know, the Crypto Crow, right on his YouTube channel. I got to ask you another question, because you know, you said that, that your wife said that you know, you're the project right now. Sure. And I'm looking behind at your wife behind the camera over there and she's shaking her head no. Right. <laughs> okay. She doesn't even listen to a word I say anymore. <laughs> she just tunes me out. So she's, she's learned to adapt. Let's talk about change of life. When you got married, you have kids. Did, did, did it change your outlook? Did it change your why of why you do what you do every day? That's a really good question. You're kind of good at your job, you know? Yeah, and I, I, uh, I like yeah. doing what I do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it does change things. I mean, I, I have a, a fairly sizable family, and you know, I, I think if anything, wait, wait, I got, I got to go with it. Are they tall too? Huh, yeah, well, yeah, I have two daughters are supposed to be six two and six three. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and I told them they're they're either playing basketball or volleyball, or they're just we're gonna put them in a That's cage right. somewhere. <laughs> um, no, it does. I think if anything, it doesn't necessarily change the why I do what I do, but it does increase the fear of screwing up. You know, it's it's if I if I make a bad call or if I if I do something frivolous or whatever, which really isn't my nature, but um, I think it's it's the the fear of loss grows. So because I don't just speak or work or do what I do right. for me, I do it for a lot of other people that depend on me. And then to, to to me, like even my viewership is an extended family. So if I screw up or if I make a bad call or something, I affect tens of thousands of people right and and so and i know that and i take that responsibility very serious which is one of the big reasons why i'll call out a crap show as it is you know what i mean just because i don't ever want the the people that do follow me to say you know you told me this and you're so wrong and i lost my house you know what I mean? you just you never know even though i don't give financial advice and i tell everybody i'm just a moron on the internet don't listen to a word i say but uh yeah it does change things but i think in a little bit of a different way well, Jason, I want to thank you so much for sure. being on Up Close and Personal. I want to I thank pleasure. you for being a part of the community mm -hmm. because you know your words are very important to the crypto community all, all around the world. I appreciate so, that. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being at World CryptoCon. We appreciate you, you being here. There's still here. time, get here. There's still time, get here. As a matter of fact, there's a link down there. If you okay. still don't have your ticket, it's half off. So oh, you come great. For, I got a 50% link off. And, so. and it really kind of just started today. It really just part. started so not, today. You haven't yep. missed much. This is yeah. still an opportunity to get I, here. I got to tell you, just incredible stuff. It is. Incredible stuff. I'm having a good time. Great. From Las Vegas, Nevada at the Aria Hotel, Casino, Resort, and Spa at World CryptoCon, I'm Dan Hunt saying have a great rest of today and an even better day tomorrow.